Welcome back to the X-Zone, hour number two, right here from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, and around the world on the Starcom Radio Network. If you'd like to give us a call, 1-800-610-7035. My email address is xzone at xzoneradiotv.com. On all social media sites, X-Zone Radio TV. And you can listen to the X-Zone, 724-365 at www.exoneradiotv.com. My guest this hour is uh, Susan Collins. We're going to be touching to Sue. Uh, we're going to be... I did it again. Oh, we're going... Touching. Well, you know, you never know, Susan. This is the Exxon. I can touch you. You can touch me. We'll touch each other. And... All righty. All righty. Here we go. <laughs> we're going to be talking to Susan about getting in touch with orbs. And Susan, welcome to the Exxon, you touchy devil, you. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> it's a pleasure to be here and uh, and to be able to talk about orbs. Uh, I'm not sure if you're familiar with them, but it's, it's those little uh, fluffy things that show up in photographs for a lot of people these days. Oh, you mean the dust particles? The, well, the, the dust, the, yeah, the, the, uh, rain, the rain, and, know, and everything else. Yeah. yeah, but how do we yeah. know? Now, a lot of people really believe that orbs have a spiritual connotation. Well... You know, I think there are there are as many theories mm-hmm. about what orbs are as there are people. Whether it's um, somebody who's passed and they feel somebody's spirit is with them, or that it's just dust from the barn yeah. or whatever. I've been uh, working with orbs and taking photographs since about 2005, and uh, I've written a book on it as well, which has uh, got lots of information. Um, Really, you know, and when they first started showing up in photographs for me, I took them to a PhD engineer and I said, you know, what do you think these things are? And he looked at it very carefully and he said, well, those are energy phenomena. And I thought, okay, well, I can I can live with that. They're just they're mm-hmm. energy phenomena. We don't really know what they are. But one thing I have found in uh, working with them all these years is that, is that they do seem to have consciousness. You can interact with them, and there's a communication at a certain level. And they do seem to have free will. They come and they go not because we tell them to or expect them to. There's, there's consciousness there and there's will there. And they show up. Um, the, the, the other big school of thought is, well, are these external to us or are these coming from us and i think both answers are correct what got you started into the investigation of orbs well um like many people i have a a long backstory Mm -hmm. Uh, i'm a professional dowser and that's somebody that works with the energy of all things we're mostly known as people who find water and minerals but the practice of finding water um fine-tunes one's ability to interact with earth energy, uh, fire, air, water, the environmental energies. So it's, um, it's a matter of tuning one's own body into uh, receiving subtle electromagnetic frequencies. So I had already done a lot of training uh, with earth energies and environmental energies, and I had, uh, in my practice, as I, as I doused wells and worked with earth energy, I had asked to connect with the intelligence of nature for about five years. You know, people, when they're doing meditation, they might ground into the planet or, uh, you know, they have a different way to sort of center themselves. But for me, it was always asking to connect with the intelligence of nature. And then one day back in 2005, boom, like the intelligence of nature made itself known in a big way to me. So that um, I was taking, I take photographs uh, just with an ordinary camera um, we see them as sparklies. There's about one in a hundred people who can actually see the orbs with their naked eyes as well. So for me, it was a process of my, my training as a dowser made me sensitive to being able to receive. And I, I think it's, it's primarily electromagnetic fluctuations. It's a disturbance in the force, if you will. So tell me about dowsing. How does dowsing work, and what are the significant advantages to having the ability to douse? 
Well, um, for me, I'll give you more of my backstory. When sure. I was 29, I was uh, diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis. My hands were crippled. Mm-hmm. I spent the next 23 years with my hands as claws, taking all kinds of medication, and regular medicine was not helping me. And I had two little kids at the time, and uh, you know, all I could do basically was lie on the couch. So uh, things weren't working. I thought, what can I do? I went to the library. I found a book on dosing in your health, and I read in the book that uh, there are earth energies, um, that if you spend time in them, either your bed or your chair or whatever it is, if you're spending time in non-beneficial earth energies, it's probably going to make you sick. So in my own life, uh, in those days when my kids were young, I uh, used to lie on a certain couch to rest while they slept, and I found through the dosing that exactly in the place where I rested, it was making me sick. So the huge advantage for me of learning to dose and learning to read these energies myself was that I could uh, create a a more healthy environment for myself and my family, and then that's extended out now into my community as well. So it's very easy to learn. mm -hmm. Is is there a correlation between the energies that, as a dowser, you find and use? Is there a correlation to those that the um, the Chinese use when they're using feng shui? Excellent question. <laughs> Very good. Uh, it's exactly the same thing for the most part. Uh, what the Chinese call feng shui, we call geomancy in the Western tradition. Mm-hmm. And I've actually written a book on that, uh, Dowsing for Feng Shui, which blends kind of a Western tradition that we have with the Eastern tradition of feng shui. Uh, where I differentiate feng shui, and I, and I apologize to any feng shui practitioners if this is insulting, but feng shui seems um, in many cases, based on a set of rules about where to put things, you know, what direction and what object and right. you know, color, very specific things. Mm-hmm. With dousing, we're reading the living force. So I go in with my pendulum or my L rods, my tools, into a room. Usually, uh, you know, we're called into a place if somebody's not feeling well or there's a problem they can't solve. Uh, with feng shui, you, you know, you have rules that you go by. With dowsing, you go in with your tools and you read the energy. You interact with the energy. Um, originally, I was asked to teach in the feng shui community, and, and somebody said to me, a practitioner said, oh, we're finding energies, but we don't know what they are. So I think um, there are so many modalities out there, and, and all of us in our own way are trying to grasp and grapple with these other types of energies that don't fit into our normal perception of space-time. If a lot of the problems that people are are encountering at either home or the office and and they mm-hmm. and they go to practitioners like yourself or or the feng shui feng shui consultants mm-hmm. what does this tell us about society today are we looking for answers in offshoot realms offshoot practices in order to try and bring some semblance, some reason to think Mm -hmm. for things that are going on? Well, I think you've put that very well. Um, But I I don't know if I would use the word offshoot, because I think what's really happening Mm -hmm. is people are turning to more traditional ways. Because up until we had, you know, in the last hundred years, we've had, you know, science and medicine come in 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 a dogmatic way, not to offend any doctors or medical practitioners listening. But uh, in former times, when, when we as humans were more connected to our environment, to the land, and we didn't have access to fancy, you know, <laughs> fancy practitioners, people uh, found within, them, within themselves answers. Uh, people were able to go into the natural forest. You know, I was down mm-hmm. in the uh, Amazon not that long ago. My son had... Um, he was a little bit sick, and, and one of our uh, our guides said, oh, you know what, I'm going to go pick some leaves and make him some tea, and he's going to feel better. So I think we're really experiencing a return to uh, more traditional, natural ways of knowing. For me, what's so exciting is, like, with your radio show and the Internet and, and the global conferences that we have, that the information is now globally accessible and, most importantly, can no longer be hidden. So in the old days, they might have burned the book or burned the person, but now we're out here. I I, I agree with you to a certain extent. However, when it Mm -hmm. comes to the Internet, I call it the largest septic tank that man has ever (laughs) created. 
<laughs> like, you know, it, it is just full of crap most of the time. Anybody can call themselves a reverend. Oh, yep. Anyone can get yep. a PhD, and in this case, it's, it's considered piled higher and deeper. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and, you know, they can, they can pull the wool over a lot of people's eyes and make a lot of money doing it. Yep, there's a lot of people uh, who prey on victims. So, so how do we how do we tell our listeners, Susan, who yeah. is legitimate and who is not? For example, how can our listeners decide that? Hey, you know, the other night I was listening to Rob McConnell on the Exxon on Starcom mm-hmm. Radio Network, and he was talking to Susan Collins, mm-hmm. and she's a dowser, you know. And I'm not up in Canada where 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 Susan is. I'm mm-hmm. down in let's say Boca Raton, Florida. How can how can people who go on the internet, which is the electronic uh, uh, telephone book of, t- of these days, mm-hmm. how can they go and find someone who is credible? Uh, well, this is a place where dowsing is uh, an excellent tool. So it is a uh, it's very easy to learn, and once people have uh, a comfort level mm-hmm. doing it. Um, For example, some of the things we douse is uh, to what degree of truth uh, is this person in? So if I'm, you know, whether I'm going to go buy a car or or get a practitioner, I'll douse to look at the overall uh, resonance that this person has. I look at personal compatibility with me. I look at professional compatibility with me. I look at, you know, the degree of truth that is going in. Mm -hmm. So um, to me, dousing has been the most amazing tool to uh, really help me guide myself through this as, well, I wouldn't call it a a cesspool or a septic tank, but there's certainly a mass of information out there, which can be overwhelming. And there's a lot of misinformation out there as well. Yeah, but dowsing, if you, you know, once you get in there, um, it's it's easy to do. So I do have a free free handout if Mm -hmm. people want to send me an email, susan at doser.ca, uh, put protocol in the subject line, and I'll send you a free handout on the protocol I use. I have got I've written books on all this, but it's a free handout uh, how to douse accurately, and I can throw in uh, how to use a pendulum with that as well, and I, I can even throw in a handout how to take photographs of orbs. So, uh, so send me an email, uh, susan at doser.ca, and I'll. I'll get you started with at no charge. All right, you were and saying I, you were you were saying that you you're using you use dowsing to find, uh, you know, if somebody is if you go to get a, buy a car. Let's use this example. You go to buy a car. Mm-hmm. Do you bring your dowsing rods with you? <laughs> well, um, the the rods and that they're and and, and um, blah, 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 excuse me. Anything can be a tool. To me, there's no magic in the tools. You can get a coat hanger and do the mm-hmm. same thing. But you're not likely to walk in. Uh, a lot of people have a little pendulum in their pocket, or you can finger douse, just pulling your fingers apart. If you put your thumb and forefinger together in two O's, uh, link, make links out of your thumb and forefinger, if mm-hmm. you can imagine that, and then pull them apart. And uh, you, you, you would ask your, this is, this is getting your body dowsing going, show me yes, show me no. When you're, uh, probably when your fingers pull apart, it's a no. Mm-hmm. When your fingers stick, it's a yes. So you can have your hands under the table while you're talking to the car salesman or whoever you know, whoever it is, and you can ask uh, if you're negotiating a price, is this person giving me uh, the best possible price that he can? Yes or no? And if you get a no, you can you can get up and walk away and say, buddy, you're, you're not being honest with me, and then they'll come back with it. But if you know if you get yeah, that's the best price, then then you make your own decision about whether to leave. How has dowsing so How has dowsing changed your life, or enriched well, your uh, life? Well, I think in in so many ways because um, you know be, with the arthritis, mm-hmm. uh, my whole immune system shut down. Um, so I was gluten intolerant, salicylate intolerant, oh and you know my it was a, I'm I'm the I'm the uh, I'm the poster child for uh, dowsing works. Um, so I was on some big drugs mm-hmm. and very limited in my mobility. Now I maintain my health completely uh, with dowsing, and I simply ask that all my body systems be in resonance with the beneficial energies of the planet. So I don't take any vitamins or supplements, and I eat everything, and, and I don't take any uh, other drugs. And I'm, I'm pretty much symptom-free. So I've I've been 
at the, at the beginning, forced to walk a very narrow path about mm-hmm. what I could do and stay healthy. And uh, as my own health cleared up, um, I was able to show other people how to do that, too. How, so hard, that, you know, I'm, how hard is it for people to learn how to douse? Uh, it's very easy. The hardest part is having confidence. And the, the hardest part is quieting the mind. You know, we talk about the monkey mind where mm-hmm. people think to themselves, oh, I can't do this, I don't know how to do it. But this little protocol I have, it, it helps to um, get you out of your ego, get get you out of yourself. And if you can be calm and relaxed and drink your water and, you know, do it when you, there's no loud music playing, then you, with the practice, um, it's quite easy. I started for myself uh, finding parking spaces. So that, you know, what a, what a great thing to be able to do. You're driving around and you, and you, you douse for a parking space. Uh, when I first started doing that, um, other people, there's a space and somebody else would pull in. So I had to adjust it. Oh, I want a parking space for my car. And then I got, well, I want a parking space for my car close to the door. So um, with dousing, it, uh, we engage the other energies and the other levels of consciousness. It, I can say it's as if we are engaging other levels of awareness and consciousness. And if we can bring ourselves into resonance with those levels of consciousness, then there are, there are energies that support us. Using dowsing to find a parking spot, I, I find that very hard to understand and believe. Well, How does it work? You should try it. <laughs> How does it work? How does it work? Well, you go into your um, into your place. I, mm-hmm. I talk about zoning in. Basically, this is what the dowsing protocol does. It okay. takes you to a place of your own inner truth. It helps you get into resonance with an external truth. You set your intention. I need a parking space uh, because my foot hurts and I can't walk that far. So you you know you give a reason in there. Mm-hmm. But when you when you can bring yourself into resonance with uh, with greater energies then there's a flow and a synergy that builds up. And I often say, uh, you know, the proof is that it works. Things, we get results, so who's to knock it? It, also, it almost sounds as if it's the, the power of belief. You know, if you confess it, you will possess it. Well, you know, there's a lot of um, easy quips that one can put on this. Uh, but, you know, for me, the, the, mm-hmm. I was really quite ill, you know, it's not a party game. It's not, you know, you don't learn to douse so you can get a parking space. That's, But it's an example. Some people you learn to douse so they can find their golf balls in the rough, you know, or their, or their, or their car keys. You know, they, these, are, these are smaller examples of um, the fact that dousing does work. But to progress with this, and, you know, and it depends on, on what one's path is, but for me it's always been to get closer to what is truth, to align myself with truth. And then once I can get into that alignment, well, what can I do with it? Because I think all of us just want meaningful, a meaningful existence on the planet. You know, what can we do? And, and the highest calling is to help people. So if we can help people with dowsing, uh, usually it's not just finding a parking space, but, you know, help people find their truth through reading the subtle energies around them, that can um, that can change people's lives. You know, I, I just received a note here from my producer, and he asked me to mm-hmm. ask you, when it comes to dowsing for a parking spot, yeah. isn't it possible that it's just coincidence? <laughs> well, that's, that's the thing. You know, we can go back to our Carl Jung and mm-hmm. uh, talk about... Uh, you know, synergy and and uh, serendipity and, and all these things. Uh, sure, it's coincidence, but it, when it happens over and over, you know, it's fine. But but that's okay. Like, I'm not trying to prove anything to anybody. For me, this has been a path that has changed my life. I have personal experience of finding parking spaces sure. and, and helping people, um, and I get testimonials all the time that... Uh, People, it's finding, I think it's finding the quiet spot within themselves. They are able to get more in touch with their truth. They are able to find a greater truth outside of themselves. And then there's a comfort in that. And whether, you know, people have lost somebody um, or they're just in an emotional crisis. Normally, honestly, people come to dousing in some sort of crisis. Uh, In my case, it was a physical crisis of health. 
but other people it's an emotional crisis with a relationship breakdown or something like that. Well, we, we know this for a fact because it was only mm-hmm. after World War I where people want, there were so many people who, who had members of their family perish in the war mm-hmm. that they needed, uh, the, that there was the, 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 the timing was perfect for some sort of, of instrument to try and communicate with the other side, and this is how the mm-hmm. Ouija board came around. Mm-hmm. You know, so is it based on the population's desire for more that dowsing and the Ouija and the the uh, thirst for psychic knowledge has, you know, been coming around and around and around? Well, I think people are continually looking for their own truth. You know, what the meaning of life, and it's uh, now that we live longer, Mm -hmm. you know, in the old days, you know, we only lived to 30 or 40. Now we can live to 70, 80, 90 and on. So that, uh, you know, in in the early part of our lives, most of us are busy having relationships and having a job and having kids and, you know, we're so busy, busy. Uh, But as, you know, those uh, worldly cares get taken care of, at a certain age, people start to look around and, and go, well, why am I here? What is the meaning of my life? What am I supposed to be doing? But you know what? I, uh, I, find, and, I have found out through the years that the people who ask these questions yeah. are the people who are not successful in life, the people who are not confident about what is going on in their life, the people who have the inability to do things on their own. Well, there's lots of people who have trouble. You know, we're, we're not all superhuman. There are lots of people who get knocked down. Mm-hmm. We all have times of vulnerability where, you know, things just don't go right. Sure. And, you know, especially with our young generation, uh, you know, they, they're not always trained how to bounce back. And you get uh, kids hurting themselves. If we could help those young kids get through some of that by saying, you know, that this is, you know, you're having trouble now. But maybe there's something outside of you. Maybe we can help you find your own truth, you know, whether it's a vision quest or whatever it is. But dowsing is a a method of self-empowerment, and that's what I like about it. It's a very easy technology that helps you go into yourself and then helps you move out into a larger arena to help solve problems. You know what I like about you, Susan? What's that? You're always saying how it helps other people. Yeah. I like that. Stand by, Susan. You and I have to take yep. a commercial break. We'll be back shortly. Exxon Nation. Susan Collins is our very special guest this hour here in the Exxon. www.dowser.ca is her website. And Susan's going to be at the Alien Cosmic Expo June 26, 27, 28 in Brantford, Ontario. More information about the Alien Cosmic Expo, visit their website at aliencosmicexpo.com. I am Rob McConnell. This is the Exxon, and you're listening to us around the world on the Starcom Radio Network. Don't go away. Access the knowledge of the universe is much easier for us to access than we may believe. Brad Johnson, Conscious Matrix Communicator, is one of these unique individuals who is able to access a strong connection to the universal mind. Through his connection, Brad has assisted thousands of clients from all over the world through natural intuitive assistance. The intuitive information received is vast, covering a wide range of subjects. Brad's innate ability includes being able to access one's own universal matrix to help them realize their potential to create a life of profound greatness. One-on-one private sessions with Brad Johnson are available to anyone from around the world. 
Brad is also a proficiently trained psychic, Akashic Records reader, an online spiritual teacher, founder of his own unique and powerful healing system, Body Regeneration Healing, as well as a professional conscious channeler in communication with his own higher self-consciousness known as Adronis. For more information or to book a service appointment with Brad Johnson, visit his website at www.consciousmatrix.com. That's www.consciousmatrix.com. Do you think you have energy problems in your home? Do you feel better when you're away than when you're home? Joey Korn is a global leader in the world of dowsing who specializes in personal energy clearing and space clearing. He can help you create an ideal energy environment in your home no matter where you live in the world. Learn about his remote spiritual house cleaning services and much more at www.dowsers.com. You can get Joey's book, Dowsing, A Path to Enlightenment, as well as other dowsing books and tools, Kabbalah books, and Walter Russell books. Joey's work is really amazing. Go to dowsers.com right now. That's D-O-W-S-E-R-S dot com or call 1-877-DOWSING. That's 1-877-369-7464. The Alien Cosmic Expo will be held in Bradford, Ontario, June 26, 27, 28, and will feature 24 internationally acclaimed experts and researchers of UFOs, crop circles, alien abductions, and much more in this three-day 2015 summer Canadian event. Experts in the field of extraterrestrials and alien encounters, out-of-body experiences, past life regression, soul reading, psychic and mediumship will all be presented with professionalism, integrity, and credibility, making the Alien Cosmic Expo the largest event of its kind in Canada for 2015. The Exhibitor Hall will feature a spectacular lineup of gifted mediums, psychics, astrologers, channelers, aura photography, healers, as well as books, DVDs, alternative health products, crystals, jewelry, and much more completing the venue with something for everyone. For all information and to purchase your tickets for the Alien Cosmic Expo, go to www.aliencosmicexpo.com. That's www.aliencosmicexpo.com. Hi, this is Ken Elliott. When I'm floating around the universe, I always try to tune in to Rob McConnell. Hey, hold there, Trinity Frog on Sesame Street. When I want to find out what's going on with UFOs or ghosts, I listen to the X Zone with Rob McConnell. This is Les Corrigan from Target Internet Development. You're listening to Rob McConnell on the X Zone Radio Show. This is John Hogue, Prophecy Scholar, and you're listening to Rob McConnell in the X Zone. Welcome to the X Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. Welcome back, everyone. This is the X Zone. I am Rob McConnell. You're listening to us around the world on the Starcom Radio Network. I'd like to give us a call, ask our guest, Susan Collins, a question about orbs, question about dowsing. Lines are now open, toll-free worldwide, 1-800-610-7035. The extension is zero, and that'll bring you right here into the Exxon Studios. And Susan Collins, thanks very much for being with us, Susan. Great having you with us. Yeah, I'm happy to be here. It's fun to talk. All right, let's get back to orbs. Because, okay. you know, dowsing, dowsing has been around for so long, you mm-hmm. know, and, and I remember seeing pictures of dowsers in the Old West going around the prairies and trying to find water for the settlers, and mm-hmm. damn it, they found it. Well, I, I do that professionally yeah. as well. You know, it's not just the Old West. It's out here in, uh, in uh, Ontario where uh, I live. Well, that's the Old uh, West, of, I guess. That's the Old West. Yeah. <laughs> no, There's West lots of, of Toronto. properties. Yeah. Yeah, there's lots of real properties, and you know, one thing, one cautionary tale that we have a lot of city people moving out to the country, mm-hmm. and they don't know about their well. So, 
it's a good idea to get your well checked before you buy a country property. There you go. Words of words of wisdom. Words of yeah. Let's talk about orbs. Um, okay. When when did the orb make the make the big screen? You know, when did the orb <laughs> the orb phenomenon break through and finally people were saying, "Listen, I've taken these pictures. I've gone to graveyards. I, I flash yeah. and I see all these little orbs." When did that come to the forefront? Well, I think it's been for about the past 10 years. Certainly for me, it started in about 2005. Mm -hmm. What I think, I think, you know, honestly, they were always there. But our uh, digital cameras are really good at uh, detecting subtle fluctuations in electromagnetic frequencies. So now that most of us carry uh, a camera or uh, iPhone or whatever the phone is, mm -hmm. everybody's got a camera on them all the time. And we're just automatically taking pictures all the time. Uh, earlier, you know, these spots would show up, and even they would show up on print film as well. I've taken orbs on print film just to show I could do it. Uh, people thought their, uh, their the print was damaged, and uh, and they didn't recognize it. But I think just in the past ten years, people are looking at these photographs and recognizing, oh, this is not, this is uh, this is something else. This is in the photograph. Um, this is an energy that's showing up. A lot of, you know, people see them at, at funerals, and uh, they think it's their deceased, and it, it may be. Mm -hmm. Now, it, I, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Oh, that's okay. But and it also, um, what I've noticed in my photographs, that uh, orbs are also generated by our own emotions. So if we are feeling happy, we get happy orbs around us, or loving orbs. Uh, I also noticed, since I work with uh, the energy of the earth and plants and all of that, uh, the trees themselves are generating orbs, and not just the orbs that we're most familiar with, taken at night, you know, with these circles, mm -hmm. but I also take photographs of orbs, energy phenomena, uh, in daylight without a flash. So we'll have a beautiful garden, and uh, there'll be a, a beautiful, soft uh, blue light over one of the flowers, and it's, it's, uh, it's actually there. It's could, actually these, there. could this blue light and some other era be misconstrued as a fairy well you know it's it's construed as fairies in this in this uh in this time too really uh, a story a story from one of the conferences i go to west coast conference in santa cruz mm -hmm. uh they have a children's program there and this little girl she was about 10 they were doing their children's activities and she looked in her hand and she said mommy mommy look there's a fairy in my hand and I'm not sure what she could see, but her mother took a photograph, and sure enough, there was an orb structure, a light in the child's hand. So, um, you know, what are what are fairies anyway? They're, uh, I'm, I'm taking pictures of, of energies coming from flowers and coming from trees. So it's, it's the life force. You know, if we want to go back to Star Wars, it's the living force. We are t photographing the living force. We can feel it with our bodies, and now we can photograph it as well. Feel so, what do you what do you think the the ulterior motive of these little orbs are? <laughs> well, I don't think there's an ulterior motive. I think they've always been there, to be honest. And All right. Just what now... what is their mission? What is their purpose? What is their use? How can they help me in my daily life? Well, those are good questions. Those are, if I may say, selfish questions. Um, well. Isn't isn't you know, this what it's about? I'd like to know what they can do for me. Well, mind you, I've never uh, seen an I, orb. I've, been, I've I've been present. Okay, they when, won't do anything for you. You why? know what? They're not going to do anything for you. Why not? They don't respond well to uh, greed, which you know. To be blunt, this is the spirit that you're you're speaking in. What is it going to do for me? You mentioned earlier that what you noticed with me is I'm mm -hmm. talking about what can we do for other people or yeah. other things or other beings. Right. If the way we heal ourselves mm -hmm. and the way we improve ourselves is through service to others. So if you want to help somebody else, you might engage the energy of an orb to do something. You might get a side effect boost of energy or something from that. But your heart has to be, oh, I want to help that other person. Okay. This, I, is, I, this is selfish wisdom. All right. So why I would like the orbs to help the sick. I would like the orbs to feed the hungry. I would and like the... the wait is, a sec. Wait a sec. I'm not finished oh, yet. Oh, 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 I'm okay. not finished yet. I would right. like the orbs to 
find housing for all the street people who live on the streets. I would like the orbs to find a way to clear up the, you know, the the mess we've made of this planet. This is the state of wishful thinking. We must each take responsibility. When you look for an answer outside of yourself, whether it's another person or an orb or something else, if you're looking for an answer outside of yourself, there will be no answer. Okay, explain that to me, because I am a little befuddled by it. Um, Looking outside of yourself to accomplish things Mm -hmm. is not the path of power. The path of power and self-healing and self-empowerment is through finding the inner truth that resonates with the greater truth. And when you're able to do that, then synchronicity occurs and uh, energy flows and those things that you want to happen do happen. The orbs are not your little uh, guys who are going to go well, and sweep the street. What are they then? <laughs> Energy phenomena. So basically, so basically, we don't know what the hell they are. Uh, well, we do have a pretty good idea. Right. They are conscious. They have free will. Hold on. How do, well, right, let's, take, let's take that one at a time. How do we know they're okay. conscious? Uh, They respond. So when I'm taking photographs of orbs, I do a little protocol. And again, send me an email, susan at doser.ca. I'll send you the protocol to take pictures of orbs. Mm -hmm. Uh, I basically go into into that quiet place myself, and I uh, get into kind of a dialogue mode where there's certain thought forms I might uh, be projecting out which are not based on greed and what, what can you do for me, but it's uh, what is there. What is there here that is willing to show itself? And then in that gentle way, you may draw them in. So basically, we don't know very much about them. We don't know what they can do. We don't know what they can't do. We don't know where, uh, the what orbs. they are. We don't know where they come from. We don't know where they go to. <laughs> So what do well, we know? I think, you're, I, I think you are taking an extreme position. And I'm a skeptic. A I'm a skeptic. I know you are. I can tell you, this is a good plug for my book. Called oh, hold on here. If you want to plug space. your book, we're going to charge you for advertising. Ah, okay. <laughs> but you have just made a bunch of statements. I can say perhaps you don't know what they are. I don't. But other people do. I, I don't. And, do. you know, I, I, I've seen many pictures of orbs that I've mm-hmm. taken to independent experts and they've debunked each and every one of them. Well, perhaps the pictures that you showed them were not uh, were not really orbs. Maybe. So how do there? Let's get back to that 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 you that know, ra- you know, that rationalization you- of of saying what is real and what is fake. Now you 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 take pictures and you see these orbs. In your opinion, yeah. they're real. Um. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So how do we know that, or how can we judge, how can we measure what is a real orb and what is a fake or a particle of dust, a raindrop, a piece of uh, some moisture in the air, or the reflection of a camera strap? Uh, well, in my book, they do. Uh, I do show different, I show raindrops, I show, show snowflakes, I show mm-hmm. different things. The orb itself generally has a structure of concentric rings and kind of looks like cotton candy in there for for the most common ones. Right. Um, Many of the dust particles and sand and all these things, they're quite obviously not anything. Um, I have photographs of snow and then these white snowflakes coming down or beautiful, uh, colorful, rainbow-colored circles. Hmm. Orbs in it, and I have uh, in in uh, I have that in the snow. I have that in rain, where you can see the rain coming down, and then there are these other shapes that we call orbs uh, in there with, with that as well. Mostly, you know, when I when I'm in person with people, and we and we I do workshops in this as well. Right. Everybody gets their camera out, and when you take your first pictures of orbs, it goes, oh, I, I get it, I see it now. So the people, you know, we can't. And until you experience it yourself, you may not believe it, and that's fine. But um, if you have an opportunity to go out with someone who takes pictures of orbs 
and then you take one, mm-hmm. you will know the difference yourself. So recognize it. You see, Susan, I want to believe. I really want you know, I to believe. I don't believe in anything. I don't believe anything. I only experience. Well, all I'm right. Are you, now, now you're dicing words because you say no, you I'm experience, not. and I and I say I want to believe. So no, if you want to have thing. the experience, that's that's like me want, having the proof in order for me to believe. So okay, on a this one, we're, system, a belief system and an experience are quite different. In your opinion, you believe something. In, in my your opinion, opinion, an experience. Yeah. An experience is a tactile, physical experience. Mm-hmm. A belief is something that may or may not have any uh, basis to it. Oh, you see, if I believe something, it has basis. There's physical evidence. There is proof that cannot be that cannot be swayed. This is what hmm. makes me believe in something. Most I believe, believe I have... The word belief. I believe I have a daughter. I believe I have a son. I believe I have seven children. I believe I have seven grandchildren because okay. they are real. I can see them. I can touch them. I can feel yeah, them. I can talk to them. No, they're not. You have an experiential sensation of these things. Oh, all right. But, you know, many many religions are based on belief with uh-huh. no uh, experiential. But belief uh, is the strongest format. power in the universe. You can't deny it. Because if a person mm-hmm. believes in something strong enough, no matter what you say, no matter what mm-hmm. I say, we will not sway them because they believe it to be so. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it, 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 you've got architects, you've got engineers. They believe that they can build pyramids. They believe that they can put a, mm-hmm. a pass through this mountain range. And they do it because mm-hmm. they had the belief. Mm-hmm. So when it comes to well, orbs, when it comes to orbs, mm-hmm. how do we know or what do we know about them that is concrete, that is factual? Well, well, people. Some people can see them with their eyes, mm-hmm. and they move around, and they respond. Uh, some people can take pictures of them, right. and they show up on in pictures and prints. So there is a physical representation of them there. But do we know anything about their their point of origin? Do we know anything uh, about them as as entities? You know, you, we you said that they are. Um. Some of them are emotion. Okay. When, when our hearts beat, mm-hmm. we have an electromagnetic pulse. Yes. The orbs that we're taking pictures of are variations in electromagnetic frequencies. I believe that some of the orbs taken in very emotional situations are simply the strong emotion created by a strong electromagnetic heartbeat. So... Is it possible, then, that we, or the person who is photographing the orb, is actually creating the orb? Yes. In some cases, absolutely yes. So the orb can be manifested by the human body? Yeah, and by plants. How about animals? Animals, too. We, we see this all the time. There's A mm-hmm. friend of mine has a, a horse then they've taught the horse to paint. You know, they put a, they offer it a paintbrush and it, a little canvas, right. and the, the horse, you know, paints this picture. And somebody took a photograph of the horse painting, and there's this big orb over the horse because it's so happy, I guess, that uh, that it's painting. All living things uh, um, that we see are generated by electromagnetic frequencies. I mean, that's a, that's a bold statement, but basically that's, that's what we're living in, is electromagnetic frequencies. The orbs are variations uh, in the pulse, if you will, of these electromagnetic frequencies. Now, we know that electromagnetic frequencies are affected by solar bursts. Mm-hmm. How does the electromagnetic frequency of our body react to a solar flare or a solar burst? Well, we get pretty um, messed up with that. Mm -hmm. Uh, Also, Wi-Fi is an extremely uh, strong signal. Mm -hmm. So if I can ask your listeners, the best thing you can do for your health, turn off your Wi-Fi at night, if you can, and usually you can, and you'll sleep better because it reduces the amount of electromagnetic uh, frequency in your environment. But with all the cell towers that are out there, all the microwave towers, all the transmission towers, isn't that next to impossible to accomplish? It's very hard. You know, and the people living in the big cities, it's mm-hmm. extremely hard for them. Um, 
if you live in a more rural area, it's much easier. So living in a city, it's it's a tough thing. So there, there but there are um, grounding uh, fabrics and tools. I don't sell any of this, but mm-hmm. I'll, a website that's quite handy is www.lessemf.com. I have nothing to do with them, but they have a lot of shielding and grounding products and information. And if somebody lived uh, like in a condo right beside the electrical box and the elevator, then there might be some products that they could buy that would help to ground and shield their particular environment. Yeah, because uh, that also applies to your to your uh, wireless telephones that you have in your house as well, where there's a base and it. That is correct. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Anything like that, yeah. And the, the, the rechargers, like yep. the worst thing I see are people putting in their phone rechargers right beside their bed. Oh, my gosh, yeah. Yeah, so, uh, you know, I, I go to people's houses, and that's one of the first things we do is, you know, you know, just plug that phone mm-hmm. in someplace else. You know, uh, it, it, there must be something to it. And what boggles my mind is when you drive up to a gas station, and right there on the sign says, Shut, turn off your cell phone. Yeah. And yet we put this these cell phones to our heads. We let our kids oh, use yeah. them. You know, for God's, oh, yeah. God's sake, Exo Nation, if you're going to let your child use a cell phone, teach them how to use hands-free. Teach them how exactly. to use the, you know, the earpiece and then the little microphone there. The worst thing you can do is put a cell phone to your brain. After all, if they're telling you Absolutely. don't use your cell phone while you're, while you're filling up with gas... Yeah, there's got to be something there, right, Susan? Yeah, absolutely. Apparently, the brain surgeons can, from the shape of the tumor, they can tell you in your brain. They can tell you what phone you were using. Really? I've I've heard that. That yeah, is I fascinating. Can't, I can't I can't cite that, but I have read that recently. Well, you know what? I've given you a hard time tonight. No, I know you have. It's fun. <laughs> yeah, because you know, I when a person like you can come on, and and you know keep toe-to-toe with me oh yeah i appreciate that i, I yeah, really well, I, do. I, I i appreciate good questions yeah and you're you're one heck never of... ass... uh you first oh no I, I was gonna say we should never assume anything that's right? true because if you uh, assume something it makes an ass out of you an and an ass out of me, me. yeah exactly right. yeah yeah no i think you know the best thing we can do for each other is ask mm-hmm. the hard questions because that's where the answers come from yeah and, you know, you've answered a lot of hard questions tonight. And, I, you know, I, I, I look at the work that Joanne and Heather have done in organizing the mm-hmm. Alien Cosmic Expo, and they've done a fascinating job. Mm-hmm. They really have. And we've had many of the speakers on the show this week. We're going to have more later on this week. And you all believe what you talk about. You talk mm-hmm. the talk and you walk the walk. Mm-hmm. And, you know, over the years I've been to many of these things where it's nothing more than... Uh, um, People selling things. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wasn't going to be that, that generous. No, no, no. I, like, yeah. I'm there with you, right? Yeah. You know, like you go to some of these so-called psychic fairs and, and you watch the person go from psychic to psychic to psychic to psychic. And then you can actually tell when they've heard what they want to hear because they don't go to any other psychic. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, this is a place that learning to douse for Mm -hmm. yourself can provide self-empowerment. You can find your own truth, and you won't need to go to those psychics anymore. I put myself out of business continually. I have clients. I teach them how to do this, and then they go off, and, you know, a couple years later, I might hear they did well. (laughs) But, you know, it's it's our own journey. We're each responsible for our own journey. Well, you know, having talked to you for nearly an hour, I know in my heart of hearts you're on the right journey. Well, Um, thank you. What can you tell us about what you're going to be doing at the Alien Cosmic Expo? Well, uh, it's all about orbs. I'm mm-hmm. I'm starting at 8.30 in the morning, so on Saturday, June the 27th, and uh, we'll, I have a, a really excellent PowerPoint presentation of many of the photographs I've taken and that some of my colleagues have taken, because there's a, a community of people who do this. We'll uh, look at uh, some of the science behind it, electromagnetic frequencies. We talk about quantum... Uh, the, the collapse of the quantum wave. We like to boggle people a little bit with uh, with that with quantum physics. Mm-hmm. Uh, then we'll uh, look at the last part of it is what are, what are not orbs, and then I put up my you know pictures of raindrops and lens flare and all the rest of it, so people get a good sense 
of uh, you know what is really an orb, what is not an orb, and a little bit of the science behind it. If people would like to get more information on you, the work you do, your courses, mm-hmm. and of course your books, mm-hmm. how can they find out all this information? Well, my website is www.doser.ca. Uh, everything's on there. I'm um, I'm traveling to the states, to England, Scotland, off to the Middle East in the spring, and and on. So I, I travel globally, internationally, mm-hmm. and teach internationally. Uh, send me an email, Susan at Dowser.ca. Put orbs in the subject line, and I'll send you my handouts on for free how to take a picture of an orb, the protocol, and how to use a pendulum, and that will get people started for free. Susan Collins, I want to thank you so much for joining us tonight. Exonation Susan is going to be one of the speakers at the Alien Cosmic Expo being held in Brantford, Ontario, June 26, 27, 28. For all the information about this great Canadian event, visit their website at www.aliencosmicexpo.com. And uh, we'll see you there. Susan, take care of yourself. Thanks very much for joining us. Thank you, Rob. Good night. Good night, dear. Exo Nation, I'll be back on the other side of these uh, brief messages as we continue here in the Exxon. A place where people dare to believe and dare to be heard, but 